Replacing uh, capacitors is probably one of the most common jobs in radio restoration work. And um, with some of these guys, getting them out and putting new ones in can be quite a challenge. Here's a case in point. That blue thing over there is connected to one of the pins of that tube. And what you should do is desolder them and get it out, put a new one in, and resolder the connections. Now, sometimes, like in this case, taking them out can actually create quite a bit of stress on the pin of the tube. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is to break any pins. And this, this guy here looks like a pin just waiting to be broken. There's not that much space to work on. There are quite a few components connected to that pin. And so getting it out without damaging anything or without shorting anything is actually quite a challenge. So what these guys came up with years ago was a technique um, where you actually cut the pins off, leave a little bit of the wire in place and use something which has been known by many names. They were either called quick heads by Sprague, uh, also called quigs and sometimes just known as pigtails. And I'll show you what I do in situations like this. First thing to do is just cut off the component at a point where I'm left with some of the original wire, like that. And there. Now let's get rid of that sleeving. So now we have this component removed, but we've got that little piece there and that little piece there. This is actually a ground point, so it wouldn't be too difficult to do, but it's still a pain in the butt. And what we have to replace here is a 6,800 picofarad capacitor. So what I'm going to do is prepare it using the pigtail method. This is really all you need. You need a small screwdriver. This is, um, you can use the small drill bit as well, probably a 1.1 millimeter, 1.2 millimeter. Take the component and I want to create the connection, the pigtail, about halfway down there. So I just place that over here just to make it easier. Get these pliers. and wind it around. Then I'll just push it down and I'll do the same to the other one, to the other leg. So I've got two little piglets, pigtails, piglet, pigtails, whatever they're called, on the end of these two points. I'll just straighten them out. Now I'll squirt a bit of flux in there. And my component is now ready to go in over those two points, those two little pieces of the original component that I've left in the circuit. But before I do that, I've got to clean those parts very carefully with isopropic alcohol to get rid of any dirt or grime that's built up. Clean that very carefully with isopropic alcohol. Then you take your capacitor and you adjust it to fit into those original wires. Try and leave the capacitor with any markings visible so you can see their value in the future. And 
there's one. There's two. Now, what this has done is it's given you leeway, it's given you time to straighten out the component exactly the way you want to. Like in this case, it looks like I'm going to have to do the one first and then do the other so that I can get it oriented just right. One leg done. Doing this with a camera is a pain in the butt. That's the second one done. Now you can actually adjust the positioning of the component any way you like, just to make it fit properly and neaten it up. And that component's changed. Now, believe it or not, that was done a lot more slowly than I usually do because trying to film it at the same time is quite difficult. But this is actually a very quick way. Now, there's a lot of, there are a lot of arguments about uh, how you should not this, do this in restorations. But if you bear in mind that your alternative is to perhaps mess up that whole tube uh, socket and end up with a total mess, this is a good compromise. It's also damn quick. Hell of a lot quicker than doing anything else. So that's using my pigtails. But let me show you how to make these uh, quickets or quigs if you just want to use, uh, use them the way they used to do it in the old days. I just use normal 0.6 millimeter silver wire. You can use any wire. You can use little bits of uh, component lead, whatever you want. And you just get it set up like that and start winding. Push it down, and you got yourself a very clean spring, which you can now use this is what you can now use to join two components together. What you can do now is just add a bit of flux to the inside of this. And when you put your components in, the soldering is really, really simple. The other thing is if you have um, two different size components, like for example, you want to connect that end to a thicker wire, okay? It's very simple. Again, you do exactly the same thing. 
you create one end in the normal way now guys have actually made special tools to do this but I find it's just a lot easier to do it like this so you've got that end for the uh, the very thin component and assuming you've got a thicker point on the other side let us say the other side is a piece of wire that's going to join that component and it's this thick then all you do is just give yourself some wire there and do that and when you straighten that out you can make it more or less straight this is what you're left with your small component goes in there and your thick component or wire goes in there and you've got a perfect way of splicing them together without any hassle again don't forget it's always advisable to squirt a bit of um, flux into the two sides so that when you put the wire in and you heat it with a soldering iron just a little bit of solder and this thing is done now the way they used to make them they used to make these things as long springs similar to this one but longer and they would actually come with uh, flux and solder already on them I know Sprague when they sold their capacitors would actually give you a packet of these things to make it easier for you to swap out old capacitors with the new ones and you could actually just heat them sometimes with a with a lighter or even a match and the solder on there would melt you wouldn't even need a soldering iron to change your components so this is something I use sparingly as I said um, when I can in a restoration I'll actually change out the components the way they should be but if I find that there's a risk of damaging a tube socket or of creating shorts in the area where the component is soldered to then I will use the quick gets or whatever you want to call these things all right hope this helped and uh, hope this makes your restorations a lot easier bye for now